I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies. Gentlemen, do we have any additions or deletions uh, to the agenda? No, sir. None. Do I have a motion to accept this agenda? Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the minutes from the previous meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move right along into a citation. We're quite honored to have the 2015-2016 Allegheny County Teacher of the Year, Dr. Stephanie Marchbank. Please come forward and say a few words. Thank you for taking the time to recognize the Teacher of the Year Award. We have so many amazing and dedicated teachers in our county, and I'm humbled and honored to stand before you to represent them. My career in education has been filled with numerous inspirational role models and supportive coworkers who set examples not only for students, fellow teachers, and other employees, but also for community members as well. My colleagues in Allegheny County, and especially at the schools where I have firsthand experience, are filled with integrity, commitment, and hope to lead our students in their learning. When I think of great teaching, I think of many friends and mentors who prove that teaching is truly a work of the heart. I think of seasoned teachers who remain in the classroom beyond required years and continue to relate to students and make learning fun. I think of new teachers whose energy and enthusiasm is contagious to both students and coworkers. I think of academic and content and classroom teachers who guide students to make informed decisions based on solid evidence rather than jumping to conclusions. I think of elective and skills teachers who encourage and help students to follow their passions. I think of physical education teachers and coaches who inspire our athletes to chase their dreams to the highest goal. <coughs> the list goes on and on of the great individuals who make our futures bright through their teaching. Of course, great teaching is of no consequence unless learners are involved. So I also think of our students, like Carson and Yeager Scholars, Rotary and American Legion speech contest winners, published uh, artists, writers, and poets, uh, student representatives, General Assembly pages and delegates, state title champions, all state course and band members, mock trial, envirothons and skills USA finalists, and many students who opt to be courageous travelers to distant lands to learn and better understand other cultures. These students and so many more have developed poise, knowledge and skills in our schools. Yet teachers and students do not make up a school alone. Clearly, our support staff of secretarial and nursing personnel, instructional assistants, maintenance and custodial staff members, cafeteria workers and bus drivers are all integral parts of the efforts to give our kids a 21st century education. These people are not only vital to the development of our children, but also to the operations and organizational structure of the entire school system. These important individuals ensure that our communities maintain healthy school settings and they also provide necessary resources for everyone to succeed. All, all schools truly rely and can thrive with dependable support stemming from school and community leaders. This support has been shown through messages of appreciation that build relationships, the sharing of wisdom and experience to create future leaders, public experience, appearances that promote a positive, ethical, and trusting atmosphere for our schools and communities, and the use of collaboration and teamwork with an emphasis on trust and purpose in order to determine and achieve a relevant vision and mission. Such action taken by our leaders promotes a productive environment necessary for success by all involved. I would also like to mention that all professionals require a strong support system behind them, and I'm very fortunate to have a very powerful one. My parents, George and Nancy Pugh, raised three daughters with a growth mindset that limitations are non-existent emphasizing all goals are within reach with hard work and perseverance. My daughters, Elizabeth and Olivia, inspire me on a daily basis to always act with integrity, purpose, and heart. And my husband, Paul, 
who actually couldn't be here, but I'll say it anyway, <laughs> never fails to give me confidence to stand, <clears throat> peace to rest, and hope to pursue my dreams. This award is very meaningful to all educators who are rarely appreciated for the heart-wrenching and time-consuming but extremely rewarding work we do every day. It is my firm belief that helping our children to prepare for their futures is by far the most worthwhile and fulfilling job of all. Thank you again for dedicating a few minutes to recognize all schools' purposeful personnel, or per, blah. Thank you again for dedicating a few minutes to recognize all school personnel's purposeful efforts to make a difference in the lives of our students. And thank you for communicating to us that you, our community leaders, fully support and respect the work we take so very seriously in our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If you would please join us up here. County uh, citation. The Board of County Commissioners highly commends Stephanie and Marchbank Allegheny County Teacher of the Year 2015-2016. They're signed by all three county commissioners, Bill Valentine, Pre Brody, and Jacob Shea. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we also have a little present for you. Yeah. This is a milestone cube, so you can remember this event. And I think it's noteworthy that Creed stayed up all night making sure it's properly wrapped wow. and looks yeah, just the way that's what I'm known for. Wow. <laughs> wrapping yeah, wrapping that's amazing. Patience, so, yeah. <laughs> you want to hold you. your citation up? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to call uh, Sierra Wakefield for with a few young students here to discuss uh, Allegheny County Recycling Program. You can face these guys. <laughs> um, so this year, um, I'd like to announce the winners of the Telephone Book Recycling Campaign. Uh, we had a total of 5,417 telephones books brought in, and Bell Elementary, um, who are our winners, brought in 1,055 of those telephone books, nearly a fifth wow. of them. So uh, that was, uh, in total, every, all the schools that um, helped in the campaign, 14 of them did. Uh, collected 4,740 pounds of telephone books that oh. were diverted from the landfill. So that helps the Allegheny County um, reach their 20% recycling goal. Um, the schools, they win incremental <coughs> prizes, um, monetary prizes. Uh, Bell Elementary won $200 uh, to be used to buy green materials like trees or recycling bins. And uh, mo money was donated from advanced disposal and waste management to help um, fund the campaign. So I'd like to recognize Bell Elementary for their efforts and the students that came here today. Thank you very much. Excuse me, I should say commissioner. Okay. okay. I think we have it. Thank, Thank you. you. 
lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. He's there already. Okay, Mr. Dorsey will now uh, talk about the fiscal year 2016 annual plan for program open space. Thanks. Good afternoon. Um, you know, every year, or almost every year, the state of Maryland uh, takes a tiny percentage of the real estate transfer tax and gives it to the counties to fund program open space. And since 1972 or thereabouts, uh, the county commissioners have uh, basically spread out this money uh, to fund it more than $10 million of recreation projects in the county. Uh, this year, we invited the uh, municipalities and local sp uh, sponsors of our, our parks to, uh, to submit requests for funding, and um, <coughs> we asked them if they have more than one request to prioritize them. And uh, we're working with uh, $358,000, almost $359,000. The request for POS funding came to $554,000. So it's about $250,000, $200,000 more than what we have. But we managed to, uh, to fund everybody's highest priority and um, have, let me see, one, two, Nine, nine projects. Uh, among them are the city of Frostburg funding development at the Clarysville Eckert Community Park, uh, Crescent Town Civic Improvement Association uh, putting a playground in the uh, Crescent Town Park. The Board of Education, this is sort of topping off the commitment to uh, provide money for the athletic facilities at Allegheny High School. The town of Barton uh, is paving some parking area at the Meadow Ball Field. Town of Western Port is putting up lights at the Maryland Avenue Ball Field. The county is uh, funding a study for, um, uh, of the county fairgrounds and future activities out there. Um, we had two, two requests from Old Town and we have two different sponsors for two different parks and they both were funded. Uh, the Old Town Community Center getting money for playground equipment and tennis court resurfacing. <laughs> The Old Town Youth Sports Commission at the Old Town Community Park. Uh, they're making some improvements in there. And the City of Cumberland actually uh, planning and designing a, uh, a trail at the Mason Sports Complex. And um, that's for your consideration, this plan, and uh, sometime before the end of this fiscal year, we have to send something to the state. Commissioners, as we've done in the past, uh, what we'll do is leave the record open uh, on this submittal and uh, ask you to take formal action at our June the 18th meeting. So. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you, David. Thanks, Ted. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move into a um, public hearing on a road closing petition. Bob? Closed. The road was open for the purposes of closure approximately a year ago. And as I understand it, there's a number of things that still need to be addressed in order to complete this because it involves uh, development property that now needs to be resubdivided, if I'm thinking about it correctly, and there are some bond issues that need to be solved that are real close but not quite there yet, as well as some confirmation that needs to be obtained from some of the landowners up there. So we're in the process of getting that. But as long as it's been advertised for the public hearing, I think it's wise to go through and at least open it up to the public to see if anyone has any concern or is here to express any opinions about that and uh, complete the other legal requirements that we have to do. And hopefully by the June 18th meeting, we'll have everything ready and we won't need a second public hearing. So I guess the purpose today would be to have that public uh, just public input if there is any. Right. This is a little piece of a road that is called uh, Summit Circle and the Summit Subdivision, which is uh, in 
east or west of here. And Above Harwood. Yeah, up, up part of the Harwood subdivision itself. But as I understand it, we're going to, the lots are all going to get shuffled around a fair amount. So. Yeah, the road closings is a reconfiguration of the lot. Some of this is because of the new septic law. We can only do so many on septic. And the developer asked that we read, that he could resubdivide. There's one issue, one of those lots may be landlocked, though he tells us he is actually in the process of purchasing or making arrangements, so we want to make sure that that property owner's been taken care of. And there's some other issues with some previous permits that the developer had. There's some bond issues which we're working out. We thought we had resolved by this morning, but his bonding company had a little problem. There was a hiccup, so we hope to have that resolved, but we're moving along. But anyway, the hearing's today, so we don't really want you to vote to close it yet until no, no. we resolve those issues. But the hearing can take place. No issues Thank with you. the cemetery. No, 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 not the cemetery. No, no. Is anybody here uh, to speak on that issue? Good enough. Yeah. We'll see Thank you. Again. you. We'll see you. Again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank. Okay, now we'll move into the real fun part of the uh, the meeting. Uh, much of tonight's dedicated to the budget, and we'd like to uh, deliver. Uh, the uh, budget message for this evening. Dear Allegheny County residents, the goals of the, count of the Board of County Commissioners are summarized each fiscal year in our budget. Our <coughs> budget reflects a conservative tone as the county continues to feel the effects of the Great Recession. The budget was developed and presented to the general public for input. Over 20 outside agencies presented funding requests at a public hearing. Two public work sessions and three public hearings were held for the budget in its entirety. For the coming fiscal year, the county's real estate tax revenue is expected to continue its decline due to falling property assessments. We are, we are able to project a modest income increase in the income tax given the static nature of the county's revenue forecast we were unable to provide many of the increases requested by our outside agencies, and we were unable to fund requests from any new outside agency. For the first time in four years, Allegheny County government will utilize its fund balance to adopt a balanced budget. <coughs> Several large one-time expenditures are the key reasons for this action. As projected, the county would need to utilize $150,000 of fund balance for the acquisition of a new state-mandated election system. It is frustrating to note that the county completed paying for the existing state election system only last year. Additionally, we are in the process of replacing our decades-old accounting system with a new one. The implementation of a new comprehensive financial system requires the use of $350,000 of fund balance. The county will need to utilize nearly $450,000 of fund balance to support debt service for the new Allegheny High School and pay for the state mandated teacher's pension shift. In spite of the use of the fund balance at this time, Allegheny County government remains solidly in compliance with the recommendations set forth by the Government Finance Officers Association and the Government Accounting Standards Board <laughs> Statement number 54 by maintaining, by maintaining two months of general fund revenue as a balance. It is important to emphasize that the county has <laughs> suffered the loss of 90% of its highway user revenue in each of the past six years, equating to more than $24 million in lost revenue. However, the county continues to be obligated to maintain 550 miles of public roads. Given the major change in administrative philosophy in the governor's mansion, we are hopeful that an incremental restoration of the highway user re revenue may be realized sometime in the next few years. The state's decision to redirect these funds and use them to develop transportation infrastructure in metro areas demonstrates the dramatic lasting effects of the war, war on rural Maryland. Funding for education remains the county's single highest funding priority. 86% of the county's general fund expenditures to our outside agencies are dedicated to the Allegheny County Board of Education and Allegheny College of Maryland. 
This year, the Board of County Commissioners is giving the Board of Education $419,401 more money, real dollars, than last year. This appropriation will achieve the state mandated maintenance <coughs> of effort funding requirement for the board. In addition to the county's commitment to increase funding for education, the county must focus on supporting basic core services to our residents. Given the sluggish nature of the economy and difficult financial forecasts, sticking to the basics has been and will continue to be a key priority for the Allegheny County government. Our county staff continues to work creatively with state and federal agencies to maximize the most favorable grant and loan packages. With regard to public water and sewer, our county's public works department is involved in the planning, design, or construction of an estimated $5 million in public utility projects supporting over 100 households at this time. Similar to a resolution adopted in 2011, this Board of County Commissioners adopted Resolution 15-5 earlier this year. This reduces the county's annual real estate tax rate by one-tenth of a penny each year. This action brings us to the lowest real estate tax rate since fiscal year 1991. Our board has also pledged to enact legislation later this year to reduce the homestead tax credit below 7%. This budget incorporates a rate decrease in property taxes that equals one-tenth of a penny, utilizes the county's fund balance for one-time uses for the first time in four years while maintaining appropriate reserves, and provides increased funding for the Allegheny County Board of Education and incremental adjustments to the Allegheny County Health Department. We wish to express our sincere appreciation to the county's senior management team and department heads for their steadfast commitment to operate within their authorized budgets. Allegheny County government's July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016 fiscal year budget is presented in its entirety on our website, www.gov.alconet.org. Sincerely, the Board of Allegheny County Commissioners, William Valentine, Creed Brody, and Jake Shade. And we, once again, we really want to thank uh, county staff for hanging tight with the budget because we're committed that uh, we will be very conservative in all of our budgets going into the future. Okay, uh, we'll now uh, call Jason Bennett, Mr. Money, uh, discuss resolution 15-10 enact a resolution adopting fiscal year 2016 operating capital budget. Good evening, commissioners. Sir, um, as Commissioner Valentine mentioned, tonight's adopting the budget and a handful of the items on tonight's agenda does just that. Uh, so the first one you have in front of you is a motion to, uh, a res resolution actually to uh, adopt the budget. And if you don't mind, I'll go over just very briefly a couple highlights and then, then take action. Um, Total budget of $131,159,915, up, up from $120 million last year, based largely on capital uh, anticipated spending of $6 million on Allegheny High School. Uh, general funds, $84.5 million, up 3% from last year. It does incorporate a loss of $317,000 of real estate tax revenue, a uh, gain of $1.2 million in income tax incorporates the fourth year of the teacher's pension shift at $2.2 million, so it's fully implemented now. <coughs> uh, has the rate decrease, as you mentioned, of a tenth of a penny, moving the rate to .9780. Uh, we did use $949,000 of fund balance, all for, for one-time things. Uh, it incorporates a 3% COLA for county employees. Our debt service is up $1.2 million, based largely on the new Allegheny High School borrowing. Um, and refinancing structure from 2013 refunding. Um, and just a few things on the budget process. We, we started in February, uh, had our budgets due from operating departments March 6th, did public hearings on March 19th and 26th, had a constant yield hearing March 26th, did budget workshops April 9th and 23rd, presented the preliminary budget April 30th, and then finally CIP and debt affordability on May 7th. 
Um, so tonight we'll just formally take action to, to adopt all those things we've been talking about for some months now. So resolution 15-10 uh, incorporates everything we just talked about and we'll adopt the budget in its entirety for fiscal year 16. So right now we're just looking for approval from you three commissioners. Gentlemen, do we have a motion to adopt resolution 15-10? So moved. Uh, second, can I explain my, my vote first? Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it, no budget's perfect, and, and hopefully over, over the course of this term, we'll, we'll be able to have a, uh, an easy budgeting process. And, um, you know, this, this budget relies somewhat on, on fund balance for one-time things, and I, I, I hate that. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of our things uh, that, we, that we've just been were, were locked into, and so we didn't help have a whole lot of room to, uh, to maneuver. So the, I, I have some issues with stuff in the capital budget, um, but at the same time, this, this budget has far more good than bad in it. Um, it, it's something that, that lowers the property tax rate to the lowest level since 1991, which is impressive for, for any, any government at any level. Um, it has record funding for, for education, <laughs> increased funding for, uh, for our, our law enforcement and our state's attorney, and uh, that's why I'm supporting it. Thank you. All good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You got your money, money man. Thank you. Okay, now we'll... Uh, Go to item seven, motion to adopt the tax levy and differential. So this one is how I get the money. <laughs> um, what this is, is this actually sets the tax levy and the differential rates. Um, so as we mentioned, the, the tax rate will be 0 0.9780 per 100. Um, adds to it 11.2% or 11.2 cents of state tax to make up 1.09 on each $100 on real property. Uh, it'll set the personal property rate at 2.445 per 100, which is two and a half times the, the real rate. Um, they'll also incorporate um, all the tax differentials through municipalities. Uh, we will also, as we've done in the past, offer a 1% discount on payments in July and August. Um, and then the interest rates also lied out there too. So this one's up now up for your vote as well. Gentlemen, do I have a motion to adopt the tax levy and differential? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, to item eight, motion to adopt the supplemental levy for special taxing areas. So, so this one's in addition to um, the levy we just did. This, in, this sets all of the rates, which we reached out to all the special taxing areas to acquire, allows us to set these rates and apply them to the tax bills as well. This would incorporate fire departments and ad valorems for our uh, sewer districts. So we're simply looking for a motion to approve those rates. Uh, gentlemen, do we have a motion to adopt the supplemental levy for special taxing areas? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number nine, motion authorizing the director of finance to have the necessary levy documents published in the local newspaper and printed in the customary pamphlet form. And pretty self-explanatory on this one, so, yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner. And now uh, call Mr. Yoder for it. Mark will be discussing the motion to authorize water and sewer rates for the fiscal year 2016. Look, commissioners. Sir. I know there's a full agenda, so I'll be brief and also uh, did a pretty detailed presentation at a work session uh, about a week ago. Uh, you have a motion in front of you. Uh, to adopt the recommendation of Sanitary Commission for water and sewer rates for FY16. Uh, the rates have a modest increase of $2 per quarter for sewer customers uh, and water customers $1 to $2 per quarter, depending on the, the district. It, it varies. I just want to make sure everybody realizes, too, for the press, that it's $1 to $2 per quarter, not per month. So it's 4 to $8 a year is the increase that the is being proposed. Gentlemen, do we have a motion to authorize water and sewer rates for fiscal year 2016? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mark. 
Well, I think it's important to, while Mark's still there, if anyone ever has a question on these, the Sanitary Commission is, is who uh, comes up with the rates and, and asks for our approval, because we hear a lot of different things. And, and the people are always more than welcome to attend the Sanitary yeah. Commission meeting and give their input on these rates. So. Yeah, the Sanitary Commission does a resolution that right. goes as a recommendation to, to this body. Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. Okay, Mr. Barkley. This will be dealing with industrial shell building in the Barkley <laughs> Business Park bid award? Yes. Changing Finally. gears a little bit from tax levies and water and sewer rates. Um, as you know, the county produced uh, some design drawings for the desired building through professional services contract and a request for proposals was issued for construction with bids due April 14th. That took place. Uh, the competitive process produced two qualified bids, Carl Bell Inc. and Lashley Construction Inc. Both submitted qualified bids with Lashley Construction submitting a low bid at $3,667,820. So with this uh, motion, we're looking uh, for the commissioners to authorize the county staff to award the contract to Lashley Construction in that amount, the $3,667,820, to construct the 40,000 square foot building uh, at Barton Business Park. And uh, it would also authorize us to issue a notice to proceed as appropriate. Gentlemen, do we have a motion to accept the uh, bid from Lashley Construction and get this project moving? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, item number 12, resolution 15-8, community development block grant application for phase two Bowling Green water project. Yes. As you know, I'm standing in for the big guy who's at home recovering from surgery. Our well wishes are with him. But uh, again, this is uh, as part of the CDBG application process. It's a resolution that's uh, uh, part of their process has to be done. And um, this again is a part of that creative financing you were talking about uh, that we're working with CDBG leveraging funding uh, for the citizens of the county. This resolution also <laughs> would authorize uh, the signing of the CDBG agreement by the commissioners and would also authorize our Department of Public Works to advertise both phases of the project for bid <laughs> when the engineering is complete. Gentlemen, do we have a motion to accept uh, resolution 15-8? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item number 13, resolution 15-11. Ms. Wigfield again for fiscal year 2016 draft unified planning work program. Yeah. From phone books to planning. Yeah. You cover it off. You know. <laughs> The Cumberland Area Unified Planning Work Program for fiscal year 2016 outlines the transportation planning activities managed by the Cumberland Area MPO. The tasks included in the work program include the core planning elements and special studies. I'm requesting the Board of Commissioners acting as the Cumberland Area Metropolitan Planning Organization to adopt the resolution uh, for the Unified Planning Work Program for FY 2016. Gentlemen, do we have a motion to uh, to accept uh, resolution 15-11. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very Thanks. much. And now that we've accepted the 2016 budget, uh, we'll let Jason talk about making amendments to the 2015 budget. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going backwards tonight. Um, I think, as you know, we adjust our budget throughout the year as, as revenues and expenditures change on us. So tonight is one more time that we'll do this. We think it'll probably be the last time for fiscal year 15, and we have four changes. Um, the, the first one we have is a revenue adjustment. Just like our budget, it's almost a, a mirror image. Um, our income taxes are performing better than we had originally budgeted, so we're able to bump them up $800,000, about 5%. So it, it almost exactly mirrors what we did in our fiscal year 16 budget. And just with our fiscal 16 budget, um, property taxes so far this year look to be down about 250000 from what we estimated. <coughs> so we want to adjust them down as well. 
So when you net those two together, it's $550,000 of new money uh, for us. So we've spread it over a couple things. Um, we need, looks like 244,000 during this year for implementation of the accounting system we've talked so much about. It's gonna be a couple year project to get this going. Um, we need $120,000 for a vacation buyback program. We've had some good luck with that and saving <coughs> costs down the line for us by buying vacation time now. Um, and we're gonna transfer $185,000 to, to PEGO to cover some small one-time projects that we have. So that would be one. Um, the second one we have is a $140,000 amendment to the EMS budget. And this is for two different things. Uh, 111,000 of it is for four life packs that were required, um, acquired by a couple of fire departments locally. They needed the county to do the heavy lifting for them as far as the grant goes, so we took that on. So $111,000 increase to buy those. It was completely grant funded between the state and the fire companies. Um, and then we also, help some of the fire companies out with, with staffing. Some of our staffing goes and works for them. They in turn reimburse us, so that's another 28,000. So no county dollars there, just bumping the budgets up. Uh, third one, Highlands Trail, we're, we're adjusting that budget by almost $21,000 to, to account for state grant we got for equipment. And then finally, in our family services department, uh, we have additional grant funding of $14,000, and they're gonna use that for operating costs, including training and professional fees. So tonight, we're just looking for your approval to amend the fiscal year 15 budget. And gentlemen, do we have a motion uh, to accept the amendment to, to the 2015 budget? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Everly, the consent agenda. Commissioners, uh, we have four items on your consent agenda this afternoon. And um, if you don't mind, I'd like to package these uh, in two separate groups. I'd like to take items 16, 17, and 18 first, if you don't mind. Uh, item 16 is uh, our staff's requesting your support to execute a revised MAU with DNR to support the completion of the Bobcat Court Wet Pond Project in the amount of $725,000. $330 and award a contract to Carl Belt Inc. for the construction of this project. This portion of this project is essentially phase two. The first phase consisted of a fixed structure conveyance from Water Street to State Street in Frostburg. Second phase is actually from State Street to the proposed pond to be constructed. Item 17, this is the bid award for phase four of the Bedford Road Mill Run Sewer Rehab Project to Carl Belt in the amount of $936,442.10. Item 18 is the authorization to advertise the Highland Trail Valley Street Underpass Project. Uh, gentlemen, do we have a motion to accept items 16, 17, and 18? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioners, item 15 deals with the county's use of the watershed assistance grant that we received from the Maryland Department of the Environment in the amount of $58,858. As uh, Dan DeWitt, uh, as you'll recall, he mentioned uh, last month that this project supports the county's WIP program for a portion of the Georges Creek uh, area near Shaft. The uh, work to be completed under this contract is an alternatives analysis, which would then be followed uh, down the road by a design phase. The firm selected by the review committee is CTL Engineering of Morgantown, and uh, it's important to note that there is no county cash, re cash requirement for this project. Uh, gentlemen, I'll make a motion that we accept uh, number, uh, item number 15. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote on this. Commissioner Shade? Aye. Commissioner Brody? Nay. Commissioner Valentine? Aye. Passes. Thank you. That's our community pond. Yeah, there goes your fish and old green. Yeah. Okay, okay uh, Mr. Everly, I think we have a bid open. Yeah, commissioners, earlier this week, uh, we took uh, a bid in for the Douglas Avenue landslide contract AC 15. And uh, hopefully at some point in time in the near future, we'll have that uh, contract on the public agenda for your review and approval. Okay, uh, Mr. Reddy. I have nothing. That's been stated before. Uh, Jake, would you like to uh, make any additional statements, comments? Just thank you for, for uh, going through the first budget process, staff, and, and uh, my fellow commissioners have been great to work with. And um, it, it's great to see that the property taxes are, are at their lowest level since 1991, which is definitely something that, that should be applauded. 
Thank you. Great. Sir, I'll keep this brief because I have another meeting. Uh, I know on mine and Bill's behalf, thank you, sir, because you really took an interest in this budget and looked at it from every angle imaginable, and that's most appreciative because it makes it a lot easier sitting here when everyone's kind of on the same page of wanting to cut tax and not add tax and spend more than we make. So thank you, sir. Uh, the, the last thing, we're going to embarrass someone a little bit because I need to run, but there's a very special person's birthday today. Uh, the administrator's wife, his birthday is today, and how he ever caught someone that's 15 years younger than him and got them to marry him. And if you know that the administrator's <coughs> 52, it would almost give away her age. So, sir, uh, hope you get out of here and have a good evening tonight. Pass along uh, your best wishes, Commissioner. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> She'll enjoy the ice cream cone from Libby's, I'm sure. That's where, that's where we're going. <laughs> Okay, uh, real, real quick, we had some, uh, some good, good things uh, went on since our, our last meeting. Uh, I was honored to uh, take part in a uh, ceremony on Friday, May 15th. Uh, a gentleman uh, received the Congressional Gold Medal. He was a member of the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, sad part about it is it took so long to get that medal because in those days, people of color could not receive such medals. I'm glad those practices have ended. And the gentleman uh, sadly is in failing health and in a nursing home, but he did finally, finally get his medal. Uh, also on, on May 18th, I took part in Lieutenant Governor's heroin and opio opioid emergency task force meeting in Hagerstown. Uh, the entire state of Maryland has got a real crisis in the use of heroin. Um, uh, the, the other drugs are, are starting to come on stronger too. Uh, this is something we really have to uh, crack down on. Uh, it'll totally destroy people. So uh, I'm glad we've got uh, leadership in, in Annapolis right now that's taken a real, real interest in this. <coughs> and on a high note, uh, we just finished up the largest, probably best Dell Fest in history at festival. This was the eighth year. Uh, once again, the, uh, the crowd was at an all-time high. Absolutely no legal problems. Uh, it truly is a family function. People have some strange ideas about what, uh, what Dell Fest is all about. And to show you the type of person that uh, Dell himself is, he uh, sponsored a program uh, for young athletes at regional high schools, especially students hoping to go on to college. He brought in professional trainers to give these, these uh, students free classes on speed and agility, uh, something that's going to help them in their future. That was done strictly out of Dell's pocket. So we owe him a big round of Thanks for that. Uh, our next meeting, we're going to my hometown. Uh, we like to move these meetings around. We've been as far west in the county as we can be. Uh, and now we're gonna go as far east. So on uh, June the 18th, our commissioner's meeting will be held at the Orleans Fire Hall in downtown Little Orleans. Don't look for the stop sign or the stoplight. It's not there. But uh, we hope to see you all down there. And everybody have a good evening this evening. Meetings adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you.